Notice from the Ethics Committee. This article has been found to be fraudulent. There is no anomalous activity present. All research into SCP-2700 and its cure has been suspended indefinitely. The documentation will be locked, but remains accessible to serve as evidence for the related Ethics Committee investigation. Researcher Perry will be held in data expunged until sentencing is complete. Item number SCP-2700 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Foundation personnel implanted within medical insurance corporations are to monitor incoming claims for symptoms of SCP-2700. Upon detection, the nearest mobile task force with biomedical capabilities is to be deployed to the subject's location in order to secure a quarantine. Family or roommates cohabitating with the subject are to be checked for infection. Those cleared are to be amnesticized and released while those infected are to be transported with the initial subject to Area 12 for study. Due to SCP-2700's highly contagious nature, the following quarantine measures have been enacted. All personnel assigned to SCP-2700 are to be male. Unauthorized personnel are not permitted access to Ward 2700. Level 4 decontamination protocols are required for 2700 personnel to leave Ward 2700. As few personnel are to be assigned to SCP-2700 as possible. Description SCP-2700 is an anomalous, multi-stage illness with an exceptionally infectious nature. While it has been found to affect male subjects, it is over 100 times more likely to infect females. It is hypothesized that approximately 12.5% of women worldwide are currently infected with some form of SCP-2700. SCP-2700 infection causes the cellular cycle to break down at the apoptosis stage. Rather than dying naturally, cells affected by SCP-2700 will continue to live and group together into large clumps causing the following symptoms. Unusual thickness of the skin puckering or dimpling of the skin, rash or discharge around infection site, constant pain and swelling at infection site, necrotizing of surrounding tissue causing black oozing sores. More severe cases may become metastatic, spreading throughout the body and multiplying symptoms across multiple sites. Left untreated, SCP-2700 infection can lead to full body necrotizing fasciitis and Researcher Harold Perry has volunteered to lead research into SCP-2700. Any and all inquiries are to be directed through him. Note from EC3. The best place to hide a lie is inside the truth. The symptoms of SCP-2700-EX are, in fact, all factual symptoms of breast cancer, as is that approximately 12.5% number. One in eight women will get breast cancer in the year 2015. All Perry had to do was exaggerate a symptom and claim it was highly contagious. That let him both claim the anomaly and get the ability to quarantine himself with his work. Evidence of Infractions Harold Perry Note from EC3 Evidence against SCP-2700-EX head researcher Harold Perry has been gathered from his research notes, email correspondence, and security footage. All information is presented in chronological order. January 17th, 2015. Research Note. The new group of D-Class personnel has come in. Our new detection protocols are becoming more and more accurate. We were able to screen and find multiple infected subjects. January 27th, 2015. Research Note. D-2990 passed away today. Whatever this is, it hits hard and fast. Better have as few people involved as possible in the project to make sure we can keep this contained. Reminder to update containment procedures. Body disposed of. February 4th, 2015. Research note. I'm getting worried about the stability of D-2994. Place her into long-term care while we continue to work on the other subjects. February 14th, 2015. Area 12 security footage. 0100 hours. 3 minutes, 15 seconds. Dr. Perry leaves Ward 2700. 0100 hours, 8 minutes, 32 seconds. Dr. Perry enters a men's restroom. 0100 hours, 10 minutes, 23 seconds. Dr. Perry exits restroom carrying a red, heart-shaped box. 0100 hours, 14 minutes, 12 seconds. Dr. Perry returns to Ward 2700. March 18th, 2015. 
email to Dr. P head researcher SCP from Dr. Perry, head researcher SCP-2700. Subject, request 2700H. Body, Dr. P We're working on a highly infectious disease anomaly. Requesting a cross test with SCP to check for efficacy. March 20th, 2015, email to Dr. Perry, head researcher, SCP-2700. From Dr. P head researcher, SCP P Subject, regarding request 2700H. Body. Sure, Harold, we'll have that over to you tomorrow. Good luck. March 22nd, 2015. Research note. D-3077 responded exceptionally poorly to treatment with SCP- Bodies disposed of. SCP- Returned to site. D-2994 seems stable, but I can tell she's getting weaker. April 15th, 2015. Research note. D-3157 was responding well to treatment cycle Lambda, but was not cured. Body disposed of. D-2994's health is deteriorating more rapidly than before. April 15th, 2015. Email. To Dr. P head researcher, SCP. P from Dr. Perry, head researcher, SCP-2700. Subject. Request. 2700-DB. Body. Dr. P We're working on a highly infectious disease anomaly. Requesting a cross-test with SCP to check for efficacy. April 15th, 2015. Email. To Dr. Perry, head researcher, SCP-2700. From Dr. P head researcher, SCP. Subject. Regarding request 2700-DB. Body. Request denied. April 24th, 2015. Research note. I think we may have found a breakthrough. D3302 is responding very well to treatment cycle He. Her tumors seem to be shrinking and her energy levels are going up. This could be it. May 5th, 2015. Research note. Note. Handwriting on this document was notably erratic when compared to other research documents. D3302 died. She was doing so well and... Damn it! All of this cutting-edge technology, all of these anomalies, what the hell are they good for? Monica doesn't have much time left. What am I going to do? May 7th, 2015. Incident report. Dr. Perry was subdued during an attempt to steal an instance of SCP- Guards report Dr. Perry attempting to use a shift change to get past security, but tripping SCP's pressure sensor. Minor injuries were reported for all parties involved. Ethics Committee Login Minutes are provided from Ethics Committee Deliberations Meeting, August 1st, 2015. Only deliberations pertinent to this incident are provided. Moving on. Next item on the agenda. Harold Perry, head researcher of the now-defunct SCP-2700-EX project has been charged with one count of falsifying D-Class collection procedures, minor infraction. One count of falsifying containment documentation, major infraction. Reckless use of D-Class personnel, minor infraction. Reckless use of an anomalous object, major infraction. Two counts of assaulting security personnel, major infraction. And one count of attempted theft of SCP, major infraction. Investigation details. SCP-2700-EX has been determined through tissue samples to be non-anomalous breast cancer. Harold cherry-picked and exaggerated symptoms and completely falsified the highly contagious aspect to both cover this fact and gain tighter control of the project using quarantine protocols. From there, he misused D-Class personnel and at least one anomaly, as well as attempting to steal a of SCP- What punishment does the O5 Council recommend? Forced retirement, placement into civilian society at level C. Hmm. Let's say level A. The overseers will balk at us, and we'll end up settling at level B. In the meantime, 
Hold Dr. Perry at Medi Site 42 until his wife passes. He won't remember after we set him loose, but I'll sleep better. Next on the agenda, final sentence pending. <laughs>